Okay, I don't want to be this guy, but to be quite honest, I'm feeling a little salty. See, about seven months ago I made a video that was titled, Why the Hornets Need to Trade Kemba Walker. Now this video was made well before I even reached a thousand subscribers. I believe I was around 500 at the time. So every time I made a video, I was hoping to get some exposure. So when I got 2,000 views in a day, I was pretty hyped until I read the comments. Just about, I don't know, 90% of the comments said that I was an idiot for saying that Kemba Walker should be traded and that he most likely would end up being traded. About six months later, Legend of Winning posted a video about Kemba needing to be traded. In my video, I got more dislikes than likes. But in his video, he got 33,000 likes and only 100 dislikes, and every comment was agreeing with him. Now again, I don't want to be this guy, but I called this and got crap for it. The point is, I was right. But anyway, me being a basketball genius aside, Kemba Walker has been put on the trade block along with pretty much anyone on the Hornets roster that any team would want to trade for, which is like three more guys. I predicted that this would happen seven months ago because I've seen this type of situation firsthand. I saw this coming because of the Jimmy Butler situation in Chicago. Pretty much since the day that he became an all-star, Jimmy Butler was in trade rumors. Then, after three years of these rumors, Butler was finally traded for what at the time seemed like not that much, when you consider the fact that it was for a three-time All-Star. Obviously, as I pointed out in my last video, it really worked out for the Bulls. But nonetheless, the Bulls traded a three-time All-Star shooting guard who was a borderline top 10 player for three very shaky assets that all just happened to work out. The same situation happened in Indiana. Basically, since PG-24 became PG-13, George had been wasting away in Indiana, and he was eventually traded when he only had one year left on his contract. For what again seemed like scraps, but ended up working out for the team that seemed to lose the trade at the time. Lots of teams, like the Bulls and the Pacers, had star players on a team with no direction. Even with years on their contracts, you could tell that they wouldn't be on the same team by the time that they were free agents again. The Charlotte Hornets are in the same situation which is why I predicted seven months ago that Kemba Walker would be getting traded. Now, there are a few teams that have been circulating in rumors. The Knicks, the Spurs, the Pistons, the Jazz, and the Denver Nuggets. Now, as you can tell from the title of the video, I think that the Denver Nuggets are the best team for Kemba, and the team that I think can offer the best deal. But let's first go over the other teams, their potential trades, and how Kemba would fit into their system. First, the Knicks. Now, the timeline is the real concern here. Kemba Walker is 27, which the Knicks' best player, Michael Beasley, and I mean Christoph Porzingis, is only 22. The Knicks could have a solid three-ish seasons with those two both being in their primes before Kemba starts declining. Another problem with this deal is that the Knicks would have to either include their first round pick or Frank Nilakina. And you could argue that down the line, both of those assets could be more valuable in a few years than Kemba Walker. I view Frank Nilakina as a future George Hill type of player, except a little bit better. An efficient 3 and D guard that has decent ball handling and playmaking, but is nothing special in those aspects. At his peak, Nilakina is like an efficient 18 and seven guy, while being one of the best defensive guards in the league. I have a video coming out soon about production versus efficiency, and I think that French Frank's potential efficiency, f me, that's a tongue twister. And I think that French Frank's potential efficient play along with his great defense would end up being more valuable than Kemba's higher production with worse efficiency. And yes, I know that Frank isn't efficient yet, but I think that he could be that type of player. Now, the first round pick. Right now, the Knicks are the 10th seed and would get around the 12th pick in the draft, which they could use on a good small forward such as Miles Bridges, Mikal Bridges, or Kevin Knox. All of those guys would be solid starters at the least, and potential stars at the best. Now if they traded for Kemba, they would obviously start winning games and make the playoffs. 
So that pick would end up being like 15th to 18th. But choosing to go after Kemba means giving up either the pick or Neil Akina, when I think that holding on to both is better for the Knicks' future. For the Spurs, the thing is, I think that Kemba on the Spurs is a great fit. However, I don't think that they can put together a good deal. Kemba is around the same age range as the core of the team, and they could use his shot creation ability, but the Spurs have about the weakest trade package available. They can basically offer DeJounte Murray and Bryn Forbes, along with one or maybe two first round picks that are both gonna be around the 28 range. I think Murray could be a solid starter slash great bench player, depending on where he fits on a team, and Forbes is a knockdown three-point shooter. They aren't bad players, but for an all-star point guard, I wouldn't call it a good deal. And the market for Kemba is going to be stronger than two late first and two solid players. For the Pistons, I think that this team is a good fit and that they could make a solid deal. Reggie Jackson, Stanley Johnson, Luke Kennard, and their first rounder. The Hornets could also throw in Marvin Williams, who the Pistons could really use. They've been looking for a stretch four for a very long time. With Kemba, I think that that pick would be around 20 for the Hornets. So the Hornets could have Johnson, who yes, has been disappointing so far in his career, but still has plenty of potential. Luke Kennard, already a good three point shooter who could be a solid six man in the future. Reggie Jackson, who's just there for salary reasons. And they could take someone like Trayvon Duvall with the Pistons pick. That, with like the sixth pick that they would get from being so bad, is a solid start to a rebuild. And Kemba in Detroit is a good fit because their offense has a tendency to stagnate, and he could really help with that. The pick and rolls with Drummond would be real, and Marvin Williams and Tobias Harris could play off of that very well as they are both shooting over 40% from three this season. So Detroit is a good fit, but I think that the Denver Nuggets are the best available option. The Nuggets can offer either Gary Harris or Jamal Murray, as well as their first round pick, and they would have to include Kenneth Fareed or Wilson Chandler to make the contracts work. Choosing between Harris or Murray seems like a pretty easy decision for both teams. I think that both teams would prefer that Murray is moved. Gary Harris is a very efficient 3 and D player. He's shooting 49% from the field and 39% from three, and he's averaging 17 points per game. Murray is three years younger, averaging 15.8 points a game, shooting 36% from three. Murray has a similar style to Stephen Curry in the way that he plays, and Harris has a similar style to Bradley Beal on offense, just with a lot more defense than Beal has. They're not as good as those guys, obviously, just trying to explain their games. As for why the Hornets would prefer Murray, like I said, Murray is three years younger. He's also got a lot more point guard ability than Harris does. Murray is more of an on-ball player, while Harris would much rather come off of an off-ball screen for a jump shot. Murray can create offense a lot better than Harris, and I think that the Hornets would prefer that to Harris. Even though Harris is a better player right now, Murray more suits the role of a star. And I think that Denver would prefer to keep Harris because the Nuggets are ranked 20th on defense, which is not good. Harris is really their best defender. A backcourt of Kemba and Murray would be really bad on defense, similar to Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum in Portland. And on offense, they could butt heads because, like I said, Murray likes to have the ball sometimes, and while he's a very capable off-ball player, that's really not using him to his full potential, and Harris is just a better fit as an off-ball player. Harris's defense and three-point shooting ability is more valuable next to Kemba. And as of now, Denver is the ninth seed, and with Kemba, I could see them being around the sixth seed, and that means that the Hornets would be getting the 16th to 18th pick from Denver. Also, I think that the Nuggets would prefer to trade for Reed over Chandler because moving Chandler would leave them with a serious hole at small forward. Now, as for how Kemba Walker would fit on the Nuggets, well, the great thing about this Nuggets team with Kemba is that he won't need to playmake that much thanks to Jokic, who the offense really runs through. I think Kemba will be getting a lot more points off of cuts and catch and shoots than he does in Charlotte, because he's never really played with that great of a playmaker. And when the offense is going nowhere and the Nuggets need a guy to bail them out, Kemba is the perfect guy for that job. Step backs, pull ups, deep bombs, whatever you need, Kemba can make it happen. 
And he can be the guy that you go to late in games. As good as Jokic is, I don't think that he's really the guy for Denver. He's only averaging 16 points a game and he's not a knockdown three-point shooter. So when you have to run an ISO play, Kemba can be the guy. A pick and roll between Kemba Walker and Jokic could be one of the more unstoppable plays in the NBA. As a defender, what choice do you make? Do you let Jokic roll to the basket for the finish? Do you give Kemba space to cover the roll, leaving him open for a three or a pull up? Do you switch? Kemba can attack a slower big and make them fall. And Jokic was one of the most efficient post up players in the league last year, so I wouldn't recommend leaving a guard on him. And if you manage to stop both of them, you also have to worry about Gary Harris getting open for threes or cuts to the basket or Trey Lyles, who is hitting 42% of his threes this year, and Paul Millsap would add a whole nother dynamic to their offense once he returns from injury, because he's also a solid post player, great passer for a four, and a decent three-point shooter, as well as a solid defensive player. Add Wilson Chandler's 3 and D play to this, and you have the formula to what could be one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in the NBA. And I could see this Denver team making it far into the playoffs next season, with the offense alone. Add a few defenders and free agency, and you could have a very solid team in the West. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music.